Okay, this is on emotional intelligence. I've been reading about this recently, actually. And it's a fascinating area. As I said, I don't know how it applies to project management, but it's uh, applied to real life. Certainly, I can understand that. So I'm, I'm into learning. So I'm into this. Okay, so give more round of applause, please. Michael Lund. Now, how many of you will be interested if, within 45 minutes, I teach you all the wisdom in the world about EQ? <laughs> so few. One more time. <laughs> you don't understand my accent, do you? Okay, let me try one more time. How many of you will be interested if I will tell you, within 45 minutes, all the wisdom in the world about EQ? Okay, that's good. Now, how many of you will be interested in tell you all the wisdom about EQ in just one slide? How many interested? Thank you. Okay. Now, once upon a time in China, there was a king who wanted to know all the strategies about war. And so he gathered all the 100 trusted generals and tell him, I want to know all the wisdom in the world about war strategies. And the 100 generals did a survey, did a uh, uh, brainstorming, and then they got the answer. And then they come to see audience with the king, and they knock the gong, 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 and as soon as they see the king, they wish the king, long live the, camera, uh, the emperor as in China. And they tell the emperor, your Majesty, we have found, you know, the answer for you. We got all the wisdom in the world about strategies. And the king presented him, was presented with 100 books. And the king looked at the book and said, what? You want me to read 100 books? I'm not going to do that. Go back and do your homework. And the generals left and back to the drawing board to do the Brainstorm. Two weeks later, they thought they found, they found the answer. And so they see the audience with the king again. And as soon as they see the king, they shouted, Long live your majesty, three times. And they told the majesty, Your majesty, we have got an answer for you. you know, and they got the package wrapped up in the red cloth. The king was excited. And the king gave up, there were ten books. What? You want me to read 10 books? I don't have the time to read the 10 books. Go back and do your work. The generals were very disappointed. Sadly, they left. And back to the drawing board again, the brainstorm. 24 hours later, they got finally the answer. They were so happy and they seek the audience of the king the very next morning. And the king was very happy. Happy as you, he was not with it. And they shouted, Long live your majesty, three times. Dear majesty, we have the answer for you. And the king was so excited. What? What do you have for me? Finally, after 24 hours of in so deep searching, he got the answer for you. And the parcel was wrapped up in a red cloth. Okay? Something like this color. Yeah. And as soon as the king lay down, he was excited. It was only on one piece of paper. The king said, General, this is what exactly I need. The king looked at the piece of paper and read, There is no free lunch. <laughs> now the best I can do for you is in 45 minutes, I will describe to you all you need to know about EQ for your project team. Now, earlier on the speaker, you write that project managers can be lonely and project managers must be proactive. Okay? In all your communication, in all your risk management, in, in all your communication with the various stakeholders. So, let's do with uh, EQ. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard EQ versus IQ. Now, IQ has long been a uh, determining criteria for scholars, okay? especially present scholars. Okay? 
How many of you here are scholars? Hands up. Hands up. None. Okay, except myself. You are in the right room. Now, EK was very popular and it was first popularized in Singapore by Ho Chok Tong during a National Day speech. Remember? Yeah, I think it was somewhere in 1996. And as soon as the speech finished, all the EQ books, employers, and media were gone. Okay. Now, what is EQ compared to high IQ? How many of you have got high IQ? How about high IQ before? No one. I'm asking you a question now. <laughs> now, how many of you here think you have high IQ? How many of you think that you've got high EQ? Okay, good. The rest of you, do you know what's the difference between IQ and EQ? <laughs> now, a research was done uh, in the last few years by, by a multinational in uh, New York. Now, they found out that for project management failure, okay, if, if there is any project uh, failure, 90% are due to EQ. Okay, only 10 to 12% is due to IQ or lack of uh, technical knowledge. Okay, so you'll be happy to note that EQ comprise of a major part of the team project success. Just so you, you uh, the earlier speaker thought that, say that I project manager must be proactive. Okay, and this is part of uh, EQ. Now, in Daniel Coleman uh, groundbreaking work, Emotion Intelligence, he said that IQ only account for 20% of the success. Okay, so just bear in mind. Okay, so if you are not a top student, okay, I'm not a top student, don't worry, yeah? Okay, because IQ is only 20% uh, of success. Okay? Now, the beautiful part of it is your IQ cannot be increased. Okay, that means your IQ level today is the same level as you are five years old. Okay, it cannot be increased. Okay, now when you when you study more, when you read your menu more, when you read your email more, when you study your documentation more, it only it only increase the span of your knowledge. Okay, so uh, EQ can be increased, whereas IQ can be stagnant. Okay. Uh, anybody know when is the best time for you to increase your IQ? Anybody? Make a guess. Yes. Young. How old? How many of you have got children? Okay, good. How many of you have no children? And how many of you have got other people's children? <laughs> now, since you are in this uh, class, I will share with you some findings. Now, the best part of uh, increasing your IQ is for your children. The best part is when they are born up to 18 months. Okay, that is the best part. Okay, now the second phase is from 19 months to 5 years, okay? And after that, we are beyond redemption. <laughs> there's, there's nothing in the increase, okay? That's why some of us are studying at uh, PMP and studying five times. Uh, and <laughs> I met one some, somebody two years ago who are uh, preparing for this. I mean, for the PMP uh, prep exam preparation. Uh, and I think he, he, he told me he said for five times, you know, and he said, okay. I, I said, it's okay, you know, I said for my driving test seven times, you know, and then I passed. <laughs> now, while IQ account for 20% of the project success, it doesn't mean that 80% is due to EQ. Okay, you now it, it's EQ plus other things else that will comprise of the 80% of the success. Now, EQ can be developed, not IQ. So, uh, in these few slides that are forthcoming, I will share with you how you improve your EQ, as, especially the team EQ. Now, if you are appointing team members, okay, for your project team, okay, when you initiate the project, okay, you need to learn your lessons, learn right from previous project. And when you are getting the project charter, you have to form your project team. Okay, can you remember your project charter, right? Now, when you choose member, of course you choose a variety of uh, members that you can choose, right? And IQ is not a good predictor, okay? So don't base on IQ, okay? Even though uh, 
you know, they will smile. Look more for EQ plus other factors. You know, how many of you are outstanding students in class? You are the only one now. Okay, if only he and my, I'm an outstanding student in my class. I always sit outside the class. <laughs> Now this is a very good chart uh, which I summarize for you. Okay, this is all the wisdom in the world. Okay, so if you uh, want it, the slides are available for you. Okay. Now this comprises here. IQ is not a good predictor of job performance. Okay. Now the ability to handle stress is a better indicator. Okay. So in other words, don't look at the results. Don't look at the school results. Okay. Look at uh, the way a person manages. Ask difficult questions. Ask embarrassing questions to your potential team members. Then you can pitch, you know, what uh, kind of material it is uh, up to. Okay, now IQ account for 25% of performance. Now there's a very interesting study done on uh, optimism and, uh, and the, the opposite pessimists. Okay? Now this is done in an insurance company whose name I should not mention. Okay, now 37 Optimistic salesmen sold 37 more insurance than the others in the first two years. Okay, so it shows you the uh, difference. Now in IQ, that is the only measurement okay, that uh, differentiate outside the years. Okay? And that's the reason why sometimes you don't understand. Them. Okay, you see uh, top silver servants. Anybody from the government service in this room? Beside Adrian? Okay, no one that I can say. This I see some see some top civil servants, huh? You know they are so high position, but when you ask them questions, when you see them do the things, huh? You look a bit blur. Right? That's what that's what reason. Because in the old days, we select scholars based on IQ. Okay. So now knowing uh the setback, now we select scholars based on both the IQ and Now, what is emotion? Now, emotion is a mental state that arises spontaneously rather than to conscious effort. Okay. And it is a feeling that accompanies the body for when we act. Now, essentially, there are six primary emotions happy, angry, sad, hate, excited, loving, and uh, sacred. Now, some of them, some of the people has uh, emotional blackness. Okay, they are like a robot. Right? When they are happy, they have the same structure of face as the other side. Okay, and that is what is called emotional blackness. You know, even they touch Toto, uh, you know, you don't see much of a smile. And when you scold them, you know, they, they, they go to the reaction of. Now, Daniel Goldman gave an example in this book, uh, if you, this woman married a high-flying doctor. You know, he's six foot tall, good-looking, and a charm, and a charm. Okay, And she was very happy with the marriage. Now, six months down the road, one year down the road, she was very happy. Now, after two years, she asked for a divorce. Okay, when Daniel Goldman asked her why, he said, my husband has no emotion. You know, he is flat. You know, when he is angry, you know, he has the same expression and he is happy. You know, every day he is saying he is a robot. So, so, so when you choose team members, do not choose those with uh, emotional blanks. <laughs> you know, the face is blank, you know, very whitish. So to attract the attention, you will wave your hand you know, before him. Okay, some of the results are assigned to you, then that's, that's good. And then in, in that case, what you do is you need to allocate the duties. Now, in emotional uh, spring cleaning, uh, is what is to, the answer to your question? Okay, now we may assign a member with a lot of emotional problems, okay? And uh, with a lot of uh, past project failures, okay? Then you need to do an emotional cleaning. You need to do emotional cleaning. 
That means that we need to clear him of all the dogs, you know, all the happiness, you know, we actually sprinkling him, you know, like you sprinkling with blue checks in here. Now yesterday I had lunch with a project manager with a major search engine firm in the world. They are the second largest, they are the mentioned them. Now the project manager told me that he she counseled the lady. Uh, the lady was too, is, her team member is full of problems now. Did you know? And I asked her what it's about. It's because the son was born uh, with an uh, uneven height on two legs. And I asked him what is the difference. He said that the leg difference uh, is, is too cement. You know, between the left leg and the right leg. Okay? And she was so disturbed. You know, and she was so guilty uh, that she gave her to the son whose legs are uh, different is too cement. Okay? And he told me that he did a lot of counseling, a lot of emotional skin cleaning, a lot of listening. Now after one year, now she's okay. Okay, so for, for team members, they've got emotional baggages, you know, family problem, relationship problem, then uh, you need to do some counseling, you know, to strengthen things so that you can start on a new stage. Now there are five components of uh, EQ. Okay, and if you understand this five component, if you master this five component, then your, IQ, your EQ will be very high. Now, Daniel Coleman in his uh, classic book okay, identified these five elements. Five elements. Number one, okay, you must be aware of yourself. Okay, and that's where the, the, the Greek uh, maxim say, know thyself. Okay, you must be aware of yourself. Okay, what makes you happy? Okay, what makes you sad? What makes you irritated? What makes you motivated? So you have to identify all these traits. Now, this is the ability to read your emotion. Okay, and recognize the impact you cause okay, when you are when when you have this failure. Right? Now so you know you must know what irritate you when you are a project manager. You know, there are some people are irritated by simple words, no? the words that keep on ringing in their ear. Okay. Now every year, the uh, every year, uh, London identified the top three words that they to people. Okay, one of them is blue sky thinking. Right. So every time your boss tell you, you know, blue sky thinking, blue sky thinking, and one day when he say blue sky thinking, uh, you know, you get irritated. Right. Now the other word is first and foremost, last but not least. You know, practically every speech in the CEO gave on consists of this word. First and foremost, you know, last and last but not least. So in your heart, you, you tell yourself, whatever you say, please say it. You know, I mean, don't, you, you don't, don't have to use these words, okay? And another word that irritates people is, to be honest with you. <laughs> that means in the last 15 minutes, what I told you are all lies. <laughs> so please don't use the word, okay, to be honest with you. Right? The other, one, the other one is to be frank with you. Right? So you have to know what irritated you. You know, what get you angry, what get you woke up, you know. So it is good to tell your team members first, you know, uh, of your peculiar traits. Now the other thing is self-management. Okay? Now the mature people, the people with high EQ, must manage your own emotion. Okay? Now anybody feel uh, angry this morning? Anybody? No one. Everybody is happy here. You don't have to go to work today. <laughs> now, when you are subject under stress, okay, when you are subject under stress, see the way you react, okay, is monitored by your boss. Okay? Now, when you are under heavy stress and you have the ability to handle the stress very well, you remain calm and the ability to contain the situation, the ability here to manage your team members, it will speak very highly of you. Okay, so the key point for a project manager is you must manage your stress and you must manage your anger and your irritation. Okay, never, never show your temper in front of your team members or your boss. Now again, because of the changing situation in the Singapore and the world, people are very stressed. You know, things change very often. The project requirement changes very often. The stakeholder expectation changes very often. 
Okay, so it is good that you remain calm. Okay. Now, for example, whether all of a sudden uh, you can't see the rain of sense. You know the three towers and the sky garden is gone, right? Okay. And all of a sudden, you know, you know the, the sky is uh, misty, right? So it is like this. You must be able to manage yourself. Now, the third one is empathy. Okay, empathy is the ability to sense, understand, and react to other people's emotions. Now, what is another word for empathy? Empathy. A simple word for empathy is you put yourself in the other person's shoes, right? Okay. You put yourself in the other person's shoes. So, uh, if the team member is upset, okay, or he is very disturbed. Okay, so you try to identify yourself with him or her, put yourself in the shoe, okay, and uh, then you imagine and feel how does the other team member feel. Okay, empathy, put yourself in the other person's shoe. Now, relationship management is social skills. Okay? The ability to inspire, influence, and develop other, other team members while managing. Okay? You know that relationship is very important in Team. Okay. Relationship is very important when you manage your stakeholders. Okay. So you have to uh, build a good relationship. Can anybody remember when must you do when must you identify the stakeholder? PMP is my question. When do we identify stakeholders? Come huh? again? Before kick up wrong. Wrong. Hmm? Come again? In? Initiation. Initiation. No. No. You are right. This is regularly. We must identify stakeholder all the time throughout the entire project. Okay? And so that's what this uh, this when we need to do the management. Okay, now I want all you to stand up. Okay, we're sitting too long. Okay, I'll just stand up. Okay. And I'm going to build a relationship, one minute, build a relationship with people around you, increase yourself, uh, tell people which company you are in, and change their heart. Okay? Then turn around and then. Things. 
He talked for a while and said, oh, the chair you sat is very nice. <laughs> now, the most important part of YouTube I find is the last part. Okay, the important thing is really the last part. The ability to motivate yourself. The ability to inspire yourself. Okay, now, what are some of the ways you can inspire yourself as a team member or project manager? Okay, pardon? Anyway? Why so serious? You don't chill out.